Now, there is a limited attempt on the part of the Confederates to reclose this uh, crack line that night of October 28th. Uh, the Confederates attack about midnight, and if you know anything about night battles in the Civil War, you know that they never turned out well. Um, and they end up firing into their own soldiers, and it's a complete fiasco, uh, and they're never able to reclose that supply line. And from this point on, they're going to start. Uh, they're going to keep bringing in, uh, bringing in supplies, bringing in soldiers. Uh, and over the next month, General Bragg ends up having to send a lot of his soldiers away. So November 23rd, when the battles for Chattanooga actually begin, you've got about 40,000 Confederate soldiers here trying to lay siege to a Union army of 70,000 soldiers in the city. So it's you know, really not in their advantage. It's going to be pretty difficult for a, an army to lay siege to an army that is twice its numbers. Um, and so General Grant decides on November 23rd that the time is right if he's going to launch his attack that ultimately breaks the Confederate hold on Chattanooga. November 23rd, he sends 20,000 soldiers out of the east side of the city uh, to take a small knoll that's about 100 feet above the general lay of the land called Orchard Knob. Now, Orchard Knob, there are about 600 Confederate pickets, so you can imagine 20,000 Federal infantry against 600 Confederate pickets. It's not going to go very well for these Confederate pickets. And so they very quickly fall back to the base of Missionary Ridge. The next day, uh, <clears throat> General Joseph Hooker is ordered to demonstrate against Lookout Mountain in the hopes that General Bragg will send soldiers from his main line on Missionary Ridge to reinforce these soldiers here on Lookout Mountain. Now, Lookout Mountain, both commanders know that there's not really a whole lot of point in holding this mountain. You're too high and too far away to shell the city. You're too high above the general lay of the land to really affect anything that's going on down below you. And Bragg does not have enough soldiers as it is to really maintain the siege. And so before this battle actually happens, Bragg orders all of the 3,000 soldiers still left on Lookout Mountain off the mountain, right? But they end up getting attacked before they're able to get off the mountain. And, and Joseph Hooker uh, takes about 10,000 soldiers and he interprets that order to demonstrate against Lookout Mountain as I'm going to attack the mountain. Uh, he's a guy who's looking, I think, for, retro, for uh, he's looking to rebuild his reputation after having been humiliated at the Battle of Chancellorsville about six months prior to this. And so he sees Lookout Mountain as a, uh, as a serious pedestal upon which he can step to on his path to uh, personal you know, rejuvenation, I guess. And so <clears throat> these 10,000 soldiers are going to attack the western side of the mountain. Uh, they're going to push these Confederates around the point of the mountain to the Craven's House down below us. And at the Craven's House, the fighting kind of stalls. There's a charge and counter charge, and the heaviest fighting is down there in the 105 acres that Robert Craven's owns. Um, about 2 o'clock in the afternoon, it starts raining, and the fighting sort of subsides and picks up again about 5 o'clock, but by that point in time, it's starting to get dark, and so the fighting is just going to die off. And during the night, the Confederates slip off the mountain. Now, this becomes sort of the iconic battle for Chattanooga, but Ulysses Grant, uh, in recalling the Battle of Lookout Mountain, said that nothing happened on Lookout Mountain even worthy of being called a skirmish. <clears throat> now, the major fighting for Chattanooga takes place on November 25th on Missionary Ridge. Pretty much all of this uh, ridge line that you can see down here below us uh, was embroiled in, in conflict on November 25th. Now, General Grant's plan for driving these Confederates off of Missionary Ridge was to attack from the flanks, to have sort of this pincer motion um, and overwhelm the flanks, push them back towards the center, and push them off the back end of Missionary Ridge. So he sends about 20,000 soldiers under General William Tecumseh Sherman to attack the north end of Missionary Ridge. Uh, and these guys end up meeting with one of their worst defeats of the war. Uh, over the course of several attacks, uh, Sherman ends up losing somewhere in the range of about 2,000 soldiers trying to take the northern end of Missionary Ridge, and he's not successful in doing so. General Joseph Hooker is ordered to attack the south end of the mission of Missionary Ridge line uh, around the area of the Rossville Gap. Now, the problem with this is that he's not actually able to get over there until well into the afternoon. 
And so, <clears throat> you know, and because well, during the Confederate evacuation of Lookout Mountain, they had actually burned all of the bridge crossings of the look of the Chickamauga or Ch Chattanooga Creek, which is down below us. And so they have to wait for engineers to show up to rebuild these bridges so they can get their artillery and wagons and things like this across. And so he's not able to get over there until well into the afternoon. So General Grant standing down on Orchard Knob is getting increasingly more frustrated. And so uh, almost in, a, in, a, in, a, in an act of desperation, he sends these 20,000 soldiers that two days before had taken Orchard Knob, he sends them forward to attack the rifle pits at the base of Missionary Ridge. Once again, ordering a demonstration not intended to be a full-out attack uh, in, in hopes that Bragg will reduce the numbers on the flanks to support the center. Well, these 20,000 soldiers, the veterans of Chickamauga who have been humiliated at Chickamauga and are looking for retribution, these guys go forward and they drive the Confederates out of the rifle pits and then they don't stop. They keep on charging up the hill, chasing after these Confederates, shouting, Chickamauga! 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 And now Grant is furious at this point because he thinks that these guys are about to get slaughtered. Well, just so happens that Bragg had not uh, orchestrated his defense effectively on the center part of Missionary Ridge. And so uh, these Union soldiers are going to overwhelm the Confederate defenses on the crest of the ridge line. And in five or six different places at once, he sees the United States flags go up as, this, as the center part of the Confederate line collapses and these Confederates begin retreating off the back end of Missionary Ridge. <clears throat> Once the center part of the line collapses, uh, General, uh, General, or, once the center part of the Confederate line collapses, General Bragg uh, is forced to order his flanks also to retreat because they can't hope to stand uh, being cut off like that from the other flank. And so they end up also retreating off the back end of Missionary Ridge. And so because of this climactic but unordered charge, the Union Army ends up uh, securing control of Missionary Ridge and therefore also securing control of Chattanooga. And they're going to maintain control of Chattanooga for the rest of the war. <clears throat> now this is going to serve as a, as a supply base during the Atlanta campaign uh, in July of 1864 uh, using supplies that come through Chattanooga, using soldiers that come through Chattanooga. William Tecumseh Sherman succeeds in breaking the Confederate hold on Atlanta. And once Atlanta falls, uh, the Confederates lose their major manufacturing and industrial center. And after that point in time, it's really only a matter of time before the South collapses. Uh, really, it's less than a year, about nine months until the end of the, end of the Civil War. So what happens here in Chattanooga has very direct consequences for, uh, the end of the, for bringing about the end of the war. And now a lot of uh, a lot of scholars will look at the Civil War and they'll say that this was, you know, the iconic, the central piece in our nation in, in our national narrative. There were a lot of issues that bring about this war, issues that were not immediately solved uh, in the aftermath of this war. But you know, 30 years after, you have veterans that come back, veterans of both sides that are coming back, trying to commemorate the bravery and the actions of the soldiers that fall here in Chattanooga. And they set up monuments like this one that we can see on the other side of this tree, the New York Peace Monument, in which you have a Confederate soldier and a Union soldier shaking hands and cloaked in the American flag. And this, I think, especially on this day, is the legacy of the Civil War, that this unit, that this Union ripped itself apart only to come back together as a stronger, uh, <coughs> more functioning, I think, uh, nation and we all enjoy the freedom that we enjoy today I think in large part because of what happens here in Chattanooga in the fall of 1863.